So, my name is Panagiotis Theofanos, and uh, first I would like to thank the hosts for organizing this prominent conference. Uh, this presentation subject is diving into the past archival research results of the Cyprus Coastal Assessment Project and the history of the first underwater archaeological explorations in Cyprus. Uh, and here I also represent the rest of the co-authors, Maria Voligo and Despinapiridis and the Department of Antiquities. The scope of this presentation is to discuss some outcomes of the research being conducted in the significant archival resources of the Department of Antiquities Administrative Archive, which remained so far largely unknown and underexploited. Moreover, it will present the history of the very first underwater explorations and discoveries in Cyprus, the reaction of the authorities to them, as well as the information provided on the pioneers conducting this research and their contribution to the down of maritime archeological field work in Cyprus. In view of recent increasing development pressures in the coastal zone and territorial waters of the Republic of Cyprus, threatening underwater and coastal heritage, it was absolutely essential that a complete survey was undertaken as soon as possible, so as to safeguard its maritime cultural environment. In this context, the Department of Antiquities of Cyprus undertook in September 2019 the implementation of the Cyprus Coastal Assessment Project, an innovative research program funded by the Honor Frost Foundation and the Government of Cyprus. The aim of the project is the mapping and documentation of the underwater and coastal archaeological sites of Cyprus and the maritime spatial planning of its coastal zone for the protection and management of the maritime cultural heritage. The first phase of the program comprises of desk-based research and involves data gathering and indexing of past underwater archaeological surveys and excavations. It also includes, importantly, a further study of all chance finds reported through the years. The main scope is the identification of any reported location and toponym where archaeological objects were found, which can lead to possible harbor sites or shipwrecks. The later approach has taken place through an extensive research primarily into the archives of the department. All relevant literature is also examined, including various sources like field reports, scientific journals, and publications of archaeological research, photographic collections, newspaper archives, as well as gray literature. CCAP research team also utilizes spatial data such as satellite imagery, aerial photos, orthophoto maps, medieval maps, admiralty and sea toponym charts, topographical plans, bathymetric data, etc. Moreover, various data sets of topographical, geological, hydrographic, and photogrammetric information have been acquired by government departments, such as the Department of Land and Surveys, the Geological Survey Department and the Department of Fisheries and Marine Research, as well as by other public authorities and private institutes. On the basis of the data gathered, a project geodatabase is developed on a GIS platform. All the extracted archival information and data are reviewed and incorporated into the database. At the same time, they are georeferenced and visualized using the tools of the Google Earth application before they are imported into the geographical information system platform. The system is implementing further analysis and evaluation, as well as extraction of additional archaeological information. The final results are expected to provide a indication of promising coastal and underwater areas of high archaeological potential, b analysis of spatial patterns of archaeological sites, and c evaluation of areas at risk. The last part of this phase will include interviews with the coastal communities or individuals that have been engaging with the sea for considerable length of time. This practice can lead to important information about <clears throat> specific areas of archaeological importance, issues of looting or even shipwreck sites that can be utilized in the diving survey excavation part of phase two. Events of enha to enhance public awareness on the protection of, the, of underwater cultural heritage are also scheduled at the end of the current phase. The above thorough archival research mainly coming from the rich primary resources of the Department of Antiquities 
led to an in-depth historical research of the past underwater geological surveys, which will be presented here. About 10 years after Jacques Yves Cousteau and Emil Gagnon fabrication of the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus scuba diving regulator in 1943, underwater endeavors were also undertaken in Cyprus. According to Cousteau, the development of underwater archaeology is closely linked with that of diving techniques, though he also remarks that the invasion of the sea by thousands of divers brought an uphope for census of sites, but at the same time struck terror into the archaeologists. Prior to these developments, either with description of what they saw, the continued use of a harpoon, or a more elaborate one in their effort to locate the ancient literary references of coastal cities in their contemporary landscape, many travelers and antiquarians through the ages were observing near shore or underwater antiquities in Cyprus. <clears throat> Within the time frame of the British period in Cyprus that concerns the present conference, the pioneering work of the archaeological excavation in Cyprus conducted in 1887-88 at Paphos, Leondaria Marchetti, that were published the same year by Hogarth, James, Smith, and Gartner. It mentions previously recognized structural features on the seashore neighbor neighboring their excavation sites at all Paphos. Discussion was made by referencing earlier descriptions of those structures by Hammer Burstall in 1811, Sagellarius in 1855, and Chesnola in 1877. Hogarth also made in 1888 an archaeological journey through Cyprus, the note of which were published in following year in Devia Cypria. Many investigations on harpoon sites were described in this important publication. However, the first underwater archaeological investigation was yet far to come. Some first terrestrial excavations that had a maritime archaeological perception and expressed interest on harpoon site investigations are interwined with the Cyprus Exploration Fund activities. These were made in 1889 and published in 1890 by Monroe and Tubbs in their excavation in Cyprus and their second season's work at Polistis Chrysophulim Nidi as they identified the harpoon of Soli. More detailed work was carried out in 1890 by Monroe, Tubbs, and Worth and Roth during their excavation in Cyprus at the third, uh, and their third season's work at Salamis, published in 1891 by mapping maritime archaeological features, noting natural reef strengthening artificially and possible remnants of keys. These first excavations as Ulrich and Kili mentioned in their paper, Britain and the Archaeology of Cyprus, the long 19th century in 2012, are characterized as more scientific or at least systematic in comparison with amateur ex excavation and collection made in the 18th and early 19th centuries. However, these excavations were not yet truly scientific excavations as those initiated by the Swedish Cyprus expedition, which offered a more elaborated description of the solid harpoon mentioned above. In parallel to this outline of surveys that took place prior to the establishment of the Department of Antiquities in 1935, George, George Jeffery attempted rescuing, rescuing Famagusta Harpoor and Medieval City by criticizing in 1900 the removal of the stones of the walls of Famagusta by English engineers for the creation of a dock tramway and their sale for the construction of Port Said. Those actions were reported to the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings by sending photographs and sketches and making alternative proposals now found in SPAB archive published in Pilides 2009. The Famagusta Harpoor project was in the end implemented, but in a much modified form. Jeffrey refused access while the work was in progress and the only object was able to retrieve after dredging works was the ancient chain of the port. With the establishment of the Department of Antiquities, it was Joan Dupla Taylor that conducted the full scale scientific excavation at the ancient city harbor of Carpasia at Ayos Philon in three successive seasons 1935, 1937, and 1938. Taylor also directed other near coast excavation of the two cemeteries at Sambres and Afendriga, undertaken in March 1938 
as a subsidiary part of the exploration of the, site, of the city site of Carpasia. The researcher in her archaeological report for the site published in 1980 gives a detailed description of the ruins of the ancient harbor, its moors and their construction method, and refers to the threats that the monument faced from human interventions. Nevertheless, the work Taylor, <coughs> uh, the work of Taylor with its maritime archaeological perspective is pioneering. Unfortunately, it did not trigger similar maritime archaeological projects the following decades and the reports of maritime antiquities in the archaeological record of the era are rare and laconic. It was not until the early 1950s when the first archaeological surveys were undertaken in Cyprus, aiming to investigate the unexplored waters of the island and locate antiquities in the sea. These expeditions were enabled worldwide by the invention of Gusto and Gagnan mentioned above, which provided the divers with the necessary breathing apparatus and thus enhanced underwater mobility. It is worth noting that the underwater surveys in the island during 1950s were mainly undertaken by British services subaqua clubs, which had the necessary equipment and training for diving. Even though the surveys were not conducted by archaeologists, they played a key role in highlighting the importance of the maritime archaeological wealth of the island, which was until then neglected. Additionally, these projects were the stepping stone for the development of the underwater and maritime archaeological projects that followed the next decade. Another development that reinforced diving practice in Cyprus was the gas-producing industry of Hajikiakos and sand that apart from the oxygen bottling, it was supplied compressed air. The firm was registered as a company in 1948 and is still a monopoly until nowadays in blending gases for diving or for medical purposes. The first record of the archival research referred to the discovery of a golden bracelet by the members of the Sabagua Club, which was falsely announced in the Cyprus Mail that it was sent to the Department of Antiquities. Communication between the Cyprus Mail and the Department of Antiquities in 31st July 1954 about the published announcement resulted in an immediate meeting with the reporter of Cyprus Museum and the Director of Antiquities for further details on the matter. There is no additional information for the outcome of this meeting and the, and the particular object. However, the possibility of the existence of such a find underwater alarmed the department. During our parallel research in the newspaper archive of the present information office of Cyprus, an article in Cyprus Mail published about the same day with the previous internal communication regards deep sea finds of the Mercury Divers, a club run by the two wireless regiment of Famagusta. The club, according to the article, had located two more Turkish or Venetian wrecks and an abundance of finds such as barrels, pronged weapons, an iron cannonball, a raft iron mast band, and some Venetian Mayolica wear. All of these artifacts have been submitted to the Antiquities Department, with which they claim to have a close cooperation. Members of the club were delighted with the help the department gives them, mainly because only items of exceptional interest were retained and others returned to the finders. In relation to the latter practice, a license to export an amphora was granted that was found during diving at Salamis to Lieutenant J.P. Grattan, a soldier diver of two wireless regiment from Augusta at the end of the year 1954. The first systematic underwater archaeological exploration reported in the department's archive was undertaken in 1954 in the harbor of Salamis, in the ancient harbor of Salamis. This is the earliest record found that is related with the history of maritime archaeology in Cyprus so far. The exploration was undertaken by the Cyprus District Headquarters Sabagua Club. The members of this diving club were British soldiers, divers of the 3rd Middle East Land Force, and was led by Squadron Quartermaster Sergeant and Honorary Secretary of the Royal Army Service Corps, W. Jackson. The underwater exploration was granted the license by Peter Mego, Director of Antiquities, and the results were published in the archaeological reports of the Society for the Promotion of Hellenic Studies. During August of 1954, the team of the Sabagua Club brought to surface numerous archaeological finds and threw some light on the seaward defenses of Salamis. As Mego mentions in the same report, an extension of the northern breakwater in the, of the main harbor was found to be connected with the natural reef that runs parallel to the shore. 
A second harbor was located more than two miles to the north, which may go considered to be the harbor used by Dimitrios Poliorkidis when besieging the city. The second harbor was located with the aid of T. Dupree and his yacht Kerinia. Archival records show that in the first days of the exploration, the services acted autonomously. However, after the first finds were sent to the Cyprus Museum, the director of antiquities appeared on board the vessel inspecting the finds. Regarding Mr. Tom Dupree, owner of the yacht Kirinia, further research showed that in June and July 1954, namely the two previous months before the Salamis underwater exploration, he put his yacht at the disposal of a team of 10 divers for the underwater reconnaissance of the island of Hios under the direction of the British School at, Ath school at Athens, according to Garnett and Boardman, 1961. In this occasion, further research needs to be done regarding the relationship of the Department of the Antiquities with the British School at Athens and the extent the, and the impact of their cooperation in maritime archaeology of Cyprus. Among the objects collected were some ancient vessels, terracotta head of a woman dated to the sixth century BC, as well as planks belonging to a shipwreck. The club was asked to report to the Department of Antiquities uh, on the location of their research. The team provided sketches of the finds, location, and a short description of each find. It is also noted that a special article for this investigation and its finds was published by the British Army magazine, Soldier, which mentions that with the military garrison of Cyprus growing, there may soon be few parts of the island's coastline which do not boast a group of divers. As a reaction to the first underwater activities in Cyprus, the Department of Antiquities paid a visit to the University of Athens and Professor uh, Orlandos uh, by Porfirios Dikeos in October 1954 to discuss the Sabagua research legislation and its implementation in Greece. In this report to the, uh, to the director, in his report to the director, Dikeos informs him that, quote, there is no legislation governing research in the sea, but the antiquities law applies also to such research. There is, as it is, a, there is a, a representative of the department is always present and the fines go to the state in the same way as in the case of excavation on land. The recipients of permits to do subaqua search must be archaeologists and must satisfy the Council for Archaeology that the work will be carried out scientifically. A possible outcome of the previous meeting was that by June 1955, at the beginning of the summer season, a published announcement in the Times of Cyprus was made, was made about plans of the Cyprus government to prohibit diving by people not specially licensed and the excavation of these ancient remains must be done under the supervision of the department. In 1955, another report to the Department of Antiquities by Lieutenant E.T. Bolt of the Royal Signals Corps entitled report of the approximate position of three Turkish galleys includes a brief description of the remains of three shipwrecks that were found south of Famagusta in 1954 and 1955. This specific report was submitted with a delay of one year as it includes information related to the article published in Cyprus Mail in 1954. A sketch indicating the approximate location of the wrecks with reference to the local coastal landscape features and structure like Golden Sands Leaf Camp was submitted to the Department of Antiquities. It is not known, however, if these shipwrecks were further investigated as there is no relevant report in the archive regard regarding these finds. A note in pencil, not the pen with the original writer used, says underwater exploration Salamis. The same note is found on letters concerning Sabagua Club of the Royal Army. We are not sure yet what was the connection between the dive clubs of Royal Army and Royal Signal Corps and if this was a joint expedition. In the same year, in June of 1955, the Cyprus Sabagua Club, in an effort to coordinate the freelance underwater explorations being done uh, by local clubs, had the aspiration to make a serious contribution to the cultural discoveries, welcomed members of British Underwater Explorers Club of London. Their common project was named Cyprus Underwater Expedition and their headquarters were located at Bogazi area, so to be near 
they are target zone to explore the hard ports of Salamis. However, even though according to the relevant report in the ARDC, that expedition was not fruitful, Hector Caitlin, who was appointed archaeological survey officer in 1955, visited Bogazi and Salamis and subsequently the exploration team seemed to be very active. As he reported to the director, he was shown a number of fragments of plain amphorae, drain and roof tiles, which uh, as he learned later, were found offshore at Cape Elea. He also notes that, quote, they now operate from a motorboat hired from Famagusta and are evidently not confirming their confining their themselves to work at Salamis alone. I was told that the underwater cameras for which they have been waiting have very recently arrived and that they will be starting to use them very soon, unquote. He was asked whether the department could loan its theodolite as one of their members was a trained surveyor. However, it seems that what he felt was different as he closed his report, his report by writing that, quote, I think there is a possibility that discoveries have been made by this expedition about which they have not seen fit to inform us, to inform us, unquote. The latter expedition gained wide publicity with extensive articles in the British and the Cypriot press of the era, as the maritime archaeological finds of the ancient city harbor attracted the public interest, uh, as, well as, of, as well as that of high-ranking government and army officers who paid visits at their premises. Unfortunately, a diver of the team had an accident underwater, a fact that was also widely published. The rest of the team members continued their research for that year, and they even returned in Cyprus in 1956 for, for underwater filming shooting. It is worth noting that the vivid interest of the amateur divers in exploring Salamis Harbor alarmed the authorities and resulted in a continuous discussion about issuing licenses to authorized underwater archaeological investigations for the protection of the underwater activities, to which the organized diving clubs were against. In the turbulent years between 1956 and 1959, there is an absence of reports regarding underwater surveys in the Department of Antiquities Archive. Some information about the underwater expeditions during this period come from the press and sporadic reports on the archaeological journals. More specifically, a brief reference is made in ARDC of 1958 about a survey that was conducted in the Harpoor area of Soli prior to the establishment of a stockpile by the Hellenic Mining Company in the area. Their antiquities have been located at the southern fringe of the, uh, of the area, dating from the 4th century BC to the 2nd century AD. In 1959, the known English explorer Blashford Schnell, at the time a second lieutenant of the Royal Engineers, conducted a, an underwater survey in the harbor of Paphos with a team of British soldier divers to investigate the archaeological remains of the ancient harbor and its environment. The mission, which was authorized by the Department of Antiquities, was named by the press as Operation Aphrodite and was conducted between 1959-1961. According to the posts of the era during the expedition, numerous vessels dating from the Hellenistic to Roman period were collected. Additionally, four iron cannons and the anchor of a shipwreck was located in shallow waters. During the summer and early autumn of 1960, a team of diverse soldiers of the RAF Nicosia Sabagua Club, led by Lieutenant T. Williams, con conducted an archaeological expedition in Salamis and Kerinia. Even though the chief of the mission asked for permission for the expedition at Salamis from the Department of Antiquities, he did not, he did not request permission for the survey in Kerinia Harpoor. The response of the department was immediate with the ban of the continuation of the survey and the collection of the amphora that was recovered from the seabed of the harbor during the survey. The incident gained wide publicity in the Cypriot and British press and reopened the issue of the authorized underwater, of the unauthorized underwater expedition in Cypriot water, as well as the necessity for a policy framework that would grant permission for underwater archaeological surveys only two scientific teams led by archaeologists. In the same year, the station commander, Group Captain Humphrey, 
reported to the Department of Antiquities that divers from the a a RAF Akrotiri located a Roman wreck near the base. The department's direction were not to remove any of the finds. It is not known from the archive if further investigations were undertaken in the area. However, it is worth noting that in the photographic archive of the RAF Akrotiri website, there are several photos of individuals from that period that show under, uh, archaeological finds underwater located uh, by the RAF Akrotiri Sapagua Club in the wider area of Akrotiri in Limassol. The years following the island's independence in 1960, several underwater projects were undertaken mainly by foreign archaeological teams. Even though the underwater surveys of, uh, by British Sapagua clubs were significantly decreased in comparison to the previous decade, some were still undertaken the first years of 60s, such as the survey at Lara Point conducted by the Episcopi uh, Combined Services Sapagua Club. During the survey, several archaeological finds were recovered, dating from Hellenistic to Byzantine period. After the mid-60s, the majority of the underwater archaeological expeditions in Cyprus were undertaken by scientific archaeological teams according to the new policy framework of the Department of Antiquities. Nonetheless, the underwater surveys in Cyprus during the 50s, undertaken by British military diving teams, contributed to the development of maritime archaeology in the island in various ways. These first underwater expeditions, they highlighted the wealth of the maritime archaeological heritage of Cyprus that was completely unexplored until then. They pointed out the necessity for the development of maritime archaeological projects led by professional archaeologists for the investigation of the underwater and maritime archaeological sites. Also highlighted the necessity for a legislation for the protection of maritime antiquities uh, and triggered the, con the contact of numerous maritime archaeological projects throughout the island the following decade, led by archaeological academy institutes. Lastly, they set the foundations for the development of maritime archaeology in the island. Thank you very much for uh, your attention.